the reason why we begin this study a few weeks ago is that well, we have been seeing a lot of news about this event happening in China, and some people are being pretty optimistic about it, and some people are being really pessimistic about it. But they don't really have a number, so we are curious, like, okay, can we find a number, have a sense of how big the impact would be? So that's why I cooperated with my colleague um, Xiao Wen Law and begin the study and look at um, what is the impact on the GDP of this lockdown in China, on China itself, and for the rest of the world. So the interesting thing about Hubei province is that, well, the province itself is majoring doing uh, heavy industries, steel, manufacturing, and so on. But the interesting part is that Hubei is a place where a lot of its workers are actually not working there. They actually work all over China. So the effect is not only about Hubei, the province itself, is going to reduce its production, but the effect is going to spread over the country where, for example, when you go to the south, in the south, in the Guangdong area, a lot of the workers are from Hubei. So they're not going there. So as a result, not only that province is affected, but the whole country is affected. Not only just few industries, but pretty much everything is affected. It's about people moving around, but it's also about goods moving around too. For example, I may be in a different province where I may not even have a lot of people from Hubei working for me, but I may be needing goods that are produced by them somewhere else in the country. So if they are not working, I'm not going to get the input I need to produce my good, and I cannot do anything, not because I hire them, but because I indirectly is using something produced by them. The exercise we did is not really have a sense of time in it, so we're looking at like a static estimate, meaning um, the number of 4% is the amount of output you will lose over the particular period. For example, if this lockdown lasts for a month, that's the number we came up with, it's about $40 billion. So if the lockdown lasts for two months, then you just double it and that will be the amount. So the reason why we believe that this number is kind of reliable, that we don't have to adjust for time, is that well, we're looking at a very short horizon, it's a month or two. So factories and producers are probably not able to change the way they produce things that quickly. If you're looking at like a year later, that's a different question. But for such a short period of time, I think you can just take that number and multiply with the amount of time that they last, and that will give you a pretty good estimate of how big the impact would be. The reason why we pick Hubei as the starting point of the study is that that event has a unique feature, which is it's completely unexpected, right? So no one knew about it. Even people inside Hubei didn't expect that it would happen. So for economists, I mean, this kind of study would be uh, what we call clean, meaning that the change or the cause is really, really clear cut. Now, if we look at other lockdowns in other countries, that's going to be a little bit more complicated because people knew that something may happen after seeing what happened in China. So people may have planned ahead, they may have changed the way to produce things, they may be moving away. So we, the, the, the estimate or the study would not be as clear cut as what we did with Hubei. It is possible, but it would not be as easy as the one we just did.